Hey, Shalom, family. Brother, sister, come forward. Let me ask you a question. How y'all doing today? My name is Michael. How y'all doing? Brother, I heard you say earlier, you say you believe in a higher power. Do you believe that the Bible is the word of God? Yeah. Not all of it. Not all of it? Since you said yeah? I'm saying, yeah. You, you said yeah, and brother, you said not all of it? Not what part of the Bible don't you believe is to be true? Most of the parts that be written. Now, is it, is it what you've been taught, or is it what you've read and your understanding you don't believe? That's what I read, because honestly, I go to church, but I'll fall asleep. But they just you fall asleep talk. in church? Church hasn't taught you anything. That's why your faith is dwindling, because your, your, the church hasn't taught you anything. So I want to show you something in the Bible. First, I want to ask you, because we won't get into the belief of the Bible, but I want to show you some things that's prophesied in the Bible, all right? So I want to ask you, sister, I want, what's your name, brother? Marion, what's your name, sister? Erica Marion. I want to ask y'all something. Do you know your nationality? If I asked you your nationality, what would you say? I know parts of it. I know what I have. So I'm going to show you in the Bible what your nationality is based off of. What, what, what is your father, sister? What is my father? Yeah, what is your father, the nationality of your father? What? Young brother, what's the nationality of your father? Okay, so you will be from the tribe of Gad, all right? And sister, you, you will be from the tribe of Judah, the same tribe Christ came from. Those are two tribes out of 12 that make up the nation of Israel. So, brother, I want to show you something. Sister, you go to church, you believe, you say you believe some of it. I want to show you out of the Bible, precept upon precept, line upon line. So you see if your spirit bear witness with these scriptures to show you that the Bible is a true book. It's not fairy tales, the angels aren't butt naked little white babies flying around with wings on. That's not what the Bible is about. All right, so give me numbers. Read, watch this, listen to this. Read what you got. The book of Numbers, chapter 1 and verse 18. Uh -huh. And they assembled all the congregation together on the first day of the second month. Mm -hmm. And they declared their pedigrees after their families by the house of their fathers. All right, so brother, sister, your lineage, your bloodline, who you are, is led by the, is led by the seed of the man. The man carries the seed, so it's based off your father. Mm -hmm. So that's why you would be from this tribe right here, the tribe of Gad. And sister, you will be right here from the tribe of Judah. Because your father will be a so-called American black. And your father will be a so-called Native American. That's what they would call your father. That's what they would call your father. So based off what the Bible says, your lineage is based off of your bloodline of your father, all right? That carries the seed. So I want to ask you another question. What is it in church, both of you, I want to ask both of you, what in church have you learned out of this Bible that, you, that sounds far-fetched to you? Because I know you were struggling with something. You was like... You just don't believe everything. What are some? Give me something that the church has taught you that you just don't believe. They haven't taught you anything. Okay. And, and, and I'm not from out here. I'm from New York, but I was raised in Atlanta. So I went to church in Atlanta and New York. They ain't really teach me nothing. It doesn't matter where you're from because the doctrines of men are throughout the whole world. It don't matter if you're from New York, Virginia, Atlanta, California, Florida, Texas. It's the same doctrine going out throughout the whole world. Our people have been scattered throughout this whole world. And we've been taught false doctrines by men. All right. So give me second. Uh, give me Colossians chapter two and verse eight. I want to show you something, okay? And this is one of the things that has struck in you and sister. You may not realize there's some things that you may be dealing with that's not biblical that we've been taught that we thought was right, but it wasn't right. All right. Listen to this. The book of Colossians chapter two and verse eight. Uh -huh. Beware. Lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. It said, beware. What is when somebody says beware, what does that mean? What is that to you? A what? When somebody says beware, that's a what to you? Be cautious. That's a warning, right? It said, beware of philosophies and vain deceit. Read. After the traditions of men. After the traditions of men. So give me some traditions of men that we deal with that the Christian church says is okay that's been failing our people Say that again. what is something in the Christian church that's been beguiling our people tricking and fooling our people or a um, going against the word of God that we keep that's that's not in this Bible You said ministry is unadulterated. Yeah. So I got to ask you a question, sister. And this is for you too, brother. Does the Christian church today, we're just going to talk about America right here. Do they teach us the laws of God? My church does. I, I can't speak for anybody else's church. Your church teaches right. you the laws of God? Mm -hmm. Have you been to a church that teaches you the laws of God? I had to look it up. You had to look at what are the laws of God? All ten, all ten of them? No, nah, it's more than ten. 
It's more than ten. The Ten Commandments are the umbrella. Then there's laws, statutes, and commandments that fall under that. So, sister, I wanna, I'm going to get a scripture for you, all right? And you say your church teaches you the laws of God? Yeah. I want to show, show you. The laws and principles. Yeah, correct. I want to show you two things. So, I got to ask you, ask me something. And young brother, how old are you, young brother? I got to ask you, I have a question. Who rules the household? My husband. Don't put me on that camera. All praise your husband. Who do, who do you think runs the household? Well, God runs my household, and then my husband. All praise. We're going to get that for you in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. Watch this. She's right on that one. Then after that, we can get you another law. Because I want to see, sis, if your church is teaching you the right thing. I want y'all to see if y'all spirit resonate with this. Because I want to definitely show the young brother some things because he don't have any faith in the church at all. And you know what? He And you got to ask yourself, is he wrong for that? No. He's not wrong for that. Read what you got. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 11 and verse 3. Uh -huh. But I would have you know uh -huh. that the head of every man is Christ. And the head of the woman is the man. And the head of Christ is God. So the sister was correct. Is God, Christ, man, woman, and child. She said her husband runs the house. She said God is over her husband. The sister was correct. Now I got to ask you something about another law. What does the law say about, the laws of God say about the apparel of men and women? What do you mean, oh, the apparel? The apparel, the things we wear. What do you see today when you watch television? What are a lot of these basketball players and rappers and stuff wearing? The men. What do you say? Outside of jewelry. Tattoos as well. What is something that they're popularizing in society and making you think is okay? What is something that a man, a woman wears that a man should wear? I mean, what is something a man wears that women wear right now that you're seeing today? So you think women can wear anything men wear? You believe that system? You believe women can wear anything men wear, just men can't wear women's clothing? I, I no, not all the way. All right, so I'm going I'm to help you all out because you said your, your church teaches the laws and you're trying to learn the laws of God. So we're going to show you a law in Deuteronomy chapter 22, all right? And tell me, sis, if your church is teaching this law, all right? We're going to help both of you out today because the young man is learning and the sister is going to be learning as well. Read what you got. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22 and verse 5. Uh -huh. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Uh -huh. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Uh -huh. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. So you hear what the Bible just said? So this is some rebuke for you, young brother. You said a woman can wear women's clothes and men's clothes, but you said a man can't wear women's clothes. And according to the Bible, God says what? Men shouldn't wear what women are supposed to wear, and women shouldn't wear what men are supposed to wear. So what does that tell you? There's a controversy somewhere. A lot of brothers today, I'm going to help you out. A lot of men today are wearing dresses and wearing clothes that don't belong to them, that belong to women. And guess what God calls it? God calls that in modest apparel. He calls it an abomination. Just like today, you see women wearing men's apparel, and God calls that an unclean thing. He calls it an abomination. What's your question, sister? I think you would have to specify that because that is true, the Old Testament. And I do agree with you 100% that, that like, men shouldn't be wearing dresses and things of that nature. And women should, you know, I've heard people that shouldn't be wearing boxes and looking, looking to look like men, but in the same token, when it comes to... What else do women wear that men's wear? But, but you ever seen women with those pants? But that's what I was going to tell you. That's what I was going to say. In the, are your, your Give me the sons of Aaron and Exodus. The only teacher from the Old Testament and the New Testament, Christ abolished the um, unclean garments. Um, the, the I'm glad you went there. I'm glad you went there. We're going we're gonna to get it for you. No, hold, hold that for me for about the sons of Aaron. Hold that for me. I'm glad you went So you think, so do you believe the laws of God are done away with? Okay, so we're gonna get so sit. All right, so we're gonna get you some edification on it. All right, we're gonna get you what Christ says. So go to Matthew. We're gonna go to Matthew 15. So we're gonna get you some edification on it. All right, because we're gonna show you what Christ said out of the Bible. So young man, the sister believes that Christ came, died on the cross, and all sin is done away with. That's what you are saying, sis. All sin is done away with. I believe that he has conquered all sin. Conquered all sin. Clearly, 
we're still dealing with it, but it's conquered it all. Okay, we're going to go through a few steps with you, all right? We're going to go through a few steps. I'm going to take my time with you, all right? Read what you got. Matthew 15, 24. I got you. Yeah, five, five. Yeah. The book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 17. Think not that I am come to destroy the law. All right, sis, we're going to take our time with this. God said, think not that I have come to destroy the law. Read. Or the prophets. Or the prophets. Because you see these men out here today, one of these perpetrators and fringes, were prophesying to you out of the Bible. God hasn't done away with this work yet. Read. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Christ said he hasn't come to destroy the law, but to fulfill the law. All right. So what law is Christ coming to fulfill according to the Bible? Do you know? So, yeah, I know what law? What Go to Hebrews. What what did you say, sis? So you think Christ did away with the law of wearing pants? No, I think that you have to write and divide the word. So he's saying. I right, watch this. Come. Hold on, hold on one second, sis. Hold on one second. The book of Acts, chapter 3, verse 18. But those things which God before has showed by the mouth of all his prophets mm -hmm. that Christ should suffer, he hath so fulfilled. So the things Christ suffered for is he fulfilled. You know what that suffering was? When he died on that cross, that sacrifice. That's why they call Christ the Lamb of God. He was that ultimate pure sacrifice. So let's go to Hebrews. Let's show her in the Bible, and I'm going to show the brother in the Bible, that the laws is done away with. The only law of God that was fulfilled that you don't have to keep anymore is the laws of sacrifice. Because, young brother, can I ask you a question? Out of the Ten Commandments, because you, you said something about the Ten Commandments before, thou shalt not kill. That's in the Ten Commandments, right? Do you believe in do you believe killing is okay? So you believe killing is okay? So you believe do you believe there's a punishment? Because when somebody kills somebody, is there a punishment for it? Yes or no? There's a punishment for it. So guess what? That law isn't done away with. That law isn't done away with. Watch this in Hebrews. I'm gonna show you the law of sacrifice that Christ came to fulfill. Watch this. The book of Hebrews, chapter 10 and verse 4. Uh -huh. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. So God said it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats, these sacrifices can take away sin. But who came to fulfill the law of sacrifice dealing with animals? Read. Where, wherefore, when he cometh into the world, uh -huh. he saith, sacrifice and offering thou wouldeth not. But a body has thou prepared me. Who was that body that came into his word of sacrifice? That was Christ. He came to fulfill the law of sacrifice. So remember what we read in Matthew 5, 17. Christ, the law isn't done away with. Not one jot and one tittle. So guess what? Thou shalt not kill still stands. Because if you kill, you will be in punishment of judgment. Eating unclean food, you will be in punishment of the judgment. Not keeping the Sabbath holy, you will be in punishment of the judgment. The Bible says what? And guess what that says? Hold on. Don't go nowhere. It says, I, I want to show you something. Listen to this. Romans chapter 13. Hold on. Watch this, sis. You said we got to obey the laws of the land, right? Who ordained those powers that be over the laws of the land? Watch this. Read what you got. The book of Romans chapter 13 verse 1. Uh -huh. Let every soul be subject into the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. Since you see that? Let every soul be subjected to the higher powers. God ordained these powers. Watch this. I got to ask you a question, brother in the red and white shirt. The same question I asked this brother right here. Listen to this. Keep reading. The powers that be are ordained of God. So, sister, you said you have to obey the laws of the land, right? The powers that be are ordained by God. So, God told you you had to follow those laws of the land. So, that what, guess, guess what that means? That's a law established by God. God's order is law. So, anything he says, you must do. So, the laws of God still stand to this day. The law, so, you can't kill, you can't steal. Women can't dress in immodest apparel, dressing like men. Men can't dress like women. Brother, is it, do you think it's okay, according to the Bible, we just showed the sister, men dressing like women, women dressing like men. God gave us a law. That's not okay. I asked the young brother right here, is it okay to kill? He said in some instances it is okay to kill. He said it's okay to kill, but I, then I asked him, do you think it's a punishment for that? What you say, young man? You said yes. So guess, guess what I tell you? If there's a punishment for killing, what does that tell you? Killing is not good. That's breaking God's commandment that we just read in Exodus. Thou should not kill. So if there's a punishment for something, that lets you know 
you're breaking a rule or a law or a regulation of God. And God, what did he do? He established the laws of the land. He ordained the powers that be. So when you see the president in his seat, guess who put the president there? God put the president there. When you see the mayor and the governor, how you doing, brother? In the Prescott Jersey, how you doing, brother? When you see the laws of God, when you see the laws throughout the land, the governor, the mayor, God put those powers that be in those places. So anything they set forth, guess who ordained those rules and regulations? God did. From that stoplight to that yield sign, God ordained the powers to be to do that. So you have to abide by those things. Because guess what? When you break the laws of the land, you also be doing what? You're going against what's ordained by God. So therefore, you're breaking God's laws as well. So that's all I'm trying to show you, young brother. You said it's okay to kill sometime. In the, in the Bible, give me Ecclesiastes chapter 3. God says there's a time and place for everything. You just can't go around killing folk because you're caught up in your emotions because you're upset. That's why people in the community are getting killed left and right today because they're emotional. They're caught up in their emotions. Do you agree, brother? Young man, do you agree? Brothers get mad because somebody stepped on their shoe, looked at them wrong, or they supposedly thought they looked at them wrong. He probably thought he knew the brother from somewhere. That's why he was looking at them. But we so get caught up in our emotions, we go against God's order. Read what you, uh, read what you got. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3 and verse 1. Uh -huh. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under, he under the heaven. So y'all ever heard the term, there's a time and place for everything? You ever heard that term? They got it out of the Bible. That's what we're reading right now. God's going to show you there's a time and place for everything. Read all the way through the verse 9. A time to be born uh -huh. and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. Uh -huh. A time to kill. And a time to heal. There is a time to kill and a time to heal. But that don't mean you kill somebody because you're caught up in your emotions. That's not the time to kill. Our time, remember, our weapons of warfare are not carnal. So we don't go, we deal with spiritual battle warfare. That's what we deal with. So we're not going out here looking for a fight, look out here to hurt our people. We can't even bring rebuke to our people, to heal our people, so they can come up out of that mindset of killing each other and destroying each other because we're so caught up in our emotions. So the time to kill is not right now. Not in this land, not in this present time. This isn't the time to kill. God will appoint that time when it's time for us to kill. You understand that? But we got some things we have to do amongst ourselves to make sure we are in the right state of mind. Nation is men leading by example.